Perfect. We welcome you on our second uh, webinar about Z-Way. Thank you very much for joining us. Today we will have a very interesting but quite difficult topics. Uh, and uh, let's start. We have quite a lot of um, attendees who already joined us. Thank you very much for waiting. Um, so today we're discussing advanced usage of Z-Way controller. Uh, and this is a second part of our webinars uh, about Z-Way. Uh, the previous webinar was a week ago about uh, Z-Way uh, home automation introduction. And we discussed first steps, uh, how to manage Z-Way devices, how to do some basic automation. Um, the uh, webinar that we that you are attending today will be solely about Z-Wave uh, features of uh, Z-Wave controller. We will discuss the expert user interface that is made for installers and advanced users. We will also uh, try to explain a little bit in, about the Z-Wave protocol about uh, insights, uh, what happens inside the protocol, how do packet looks like, etc. Uh, additionally, we will discuss Z-Wave device configurations and some diagnostics. Uh, at the end, we will um, we will analyze few problems that we encountered with uh, uh, just few devices that we picked up. Um, uh, and uh, see how Z-Way Expert user interface can help you to analyze those those problems and um, uh, understand how to bypass them. Uh, next week we will discuss more about Z-Way uh, integration with other systems, uh, with um, uh, API, HTTP API, JavaScript API, etc. The full series of uh, those webinars is available um, on our website. The link is below. The Z-Way Expert UI is a special user interface that helps to understand how Z-Wave device looks like and how to configure them. Uh, in this user interface, you can monitor and control devices. Uh, this is not for daily usage, but more for diagnostics, for uh, tests, and um, to set up and to test things. Uh, additionally, you can see Z-Wave device types and Z-Wave statuses. Uh, and you can also do uh, some setup of Z-Wave devices. You can change settings. You can see the full list of um, Z-Wave command classes. We will explain later what does it mean. Uh, the version of the device, the SDK it is based on. Uh, you can configure different device-specific parameters and wake-up parameters. Uh, you can set up associations. You can even run some expert commands that are usually uh, not executed, but for some tests you can uh, access very low-level commands. You can do firmware upgrade and uh, also inspect different uh, device-related parameters that are stored in the controller. You can also uh, check the device security status. Additionally, Z-Wave Expert User Interface uh, helps you to manage the network. Uh, of course, you can do inclusion and exclusion of devices, like in a simple user interface. But additionally to this, you can do quite a lot of things that are mandatory for all the Z-Wave controllers, but is usually hidden quite deep. In Z-Way uh, user uh, interface, you don't see those buttons and those controls. But in the expert user interface, you have the full access to all the features. Uh, here, you can also do uh, replace and remove of failed nodes. This is what we discussed um, on the network diagnostic webinar. Um, it's mandatory to remove failed nodes from your network to help your network to stay uh, uh, well done. Uh, you can also 
join existing networks as a secondary controller with your Z-Way controller. Um, for example, you can join networks where master primary controller is uh, Home Seer, Smart Things, Fibaro, uh, Vera, whatever. Uh, additionally, there is a full control of um, SUC and SIS uh, uh, management. Uh, those are pretty uh, pretty advanced features of Z-Wave that helps to maintain the network. Usually everything works out of the box and uh, we will not even discuss those uh, very advanced topics here. Uh, but you also have full access and if you read uh, the documentation and you understand what you do, you can do it uh, from this user interface. You can also do Z-Wave topology backup and restore. That means you can fully save uh, all your devices uh, and uh, then fully restore them. Uh, this uh, is also working to restore on another hardware. For example, you can, uh, if your USB dongle is broken for some reason or you lost it, you can restore the full network on another one. Uh, in Z-Wave Me devices, you can also change frequency on the fly. This is especially helpful for development or for regions where uh, the main frequency is not the same as in US or in Europe. Uh, and uh, also there are different network reorganization and uh, visualization tools uh, that we already discussed in another webinar. Uh, Additionally, you can uh, check the hardware capabilities and uh, transceiver version, the hardware version and uh, firmware version. And of course, you can up update them. Besides that, there, is a, there are quite a lot of different uh, pages that are dedicated for network diagnostics. Um, that is uh, visualization of neighbors and routes, uh, traffic view, uh, noise level view, uh, traffic uh, statistics, and uh, the outgoing queue of the Z-Way server itself. We will not uh, stop on those topics too much. Uh, instead, we encourage you to uh, watch a dedicated webinar that took place last month. Uh, the link is uh, presented on this page. You can also find it on our website. So now let's uh, do a deep tour of um, uh, the expert user interface and uh, um, I will explain every page, what you can do on this page and how it works. Sorry, we have some problem. Uh -huh. Okay, full screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the expert user interface. Uh, and uh, on the very uh, beginning, on the home page, it shows you how many devices do you have, how many battery devices, FLIRS devices. Uh, but this is some just generic overview. Um, the menu on the top allows you to navigate for different uh, pages. And the very first menu item is control. Under control, you, uh, you have all the devices uh, and their features uh, sorted by types. Uh, in switches view, you can uh, switch on off different devices. Uh, and here you can see two devices. One device is number three. Uh, after the dot, it shows you the ch ch channel number. Zero means uh, no channels, and um, one and two means channel one and channel two. We will discuss a little bit later what does it mean. Uh, then we have device number four. It presents only one feature. Uh, of course, you can update uh, the status at any time. This uh, pressing the button will request uh, the current status. Under sensors, you have quite a lot of sensors presented here. So the four first sensors are presented by Fibaro door sensor. 
uh, of, sorry, filio door sensor. This uh, door sensor uh, provides us a tamper value, door window ve value, uh, temperature, and luminance. And uh, of course, everything is updated instantly. So if we take that device and um, uh, we move the uh, the magnet or the tamper, we will see changes. Uh, the temperature and luminance are updated when the device is sending us reports. Additionally, we can request them at any moment, but keep in mind that this device is sleeping, so the request will be uh, delivered to the device only when it wakes up. Uh, then we see three more values provided by the FIBAR double switch. The switch provides on outside of channels, it provides uh, the electric power uh, metering. Additionally, uh, it provides the same values on channels one and two. And the filio plug, which is number four, provides us four different values. So the current voltage, uh, the current power consumption, um, current and uh, the phase shift. Uh, pretty same for meters, there are a few meters. Uh, meters are pretty same values as, se as sensors, but just to represent accumulated values. Then we have thermostats. I have not included any uh, for this presentation, uh, same for locks, but uh, if you include some, you will have devices presented here. Additionally, in notifications, you, you can have uh, different alarm um, values. For example, the door sensor will send us an, e an event, and the Fibaro switch will also send us a overheat event and uh, power management failure uh, alarm. That was control tab. Keep in mind that this is not for daily usage, it's more for testing your device, uh, check how it works, um, change some values, uh, but certainly not for daily usage. The device uh, menu allows you to uh, navigate through device statuses. Uh, here, you can look that device number two is a battery device. And you can also check when it was last time online and uh, when will be the next wake up for this device. Uh, and the green check mark here uh, shows that the device is working properly. That means it's not failed and last communication succeeded to the device. Uh, pretty same is shown for two other devices, the double switch and the plug, but um, uh, here we see that those are mains power device and they don't go into sleep mode, so there is no wake up information for them. Device types shows you uh, security status of the device uh, and uh, Z-Wave SDK version. So this, uh, those devices are based on fifth generation and uh, we can uh, see their SDK version. Additionally, you see um, device firmware version, which is also important. For example, if you want to up update devices, you, you might need to see which is the current version before doing an update. Battery information shows you um, the battery level. This is a brand new device, so we have uh, the battery still fully charged. Associations show you a direct association between devices. Um, there are no associations between different devices and all of them are just to the controller itself. So by default, not to frustrate people, we hide them, but if you press this button, uh, you will be able to see all the associations. The same view will be available under device configuration tab, but this is just to list all active associations on one page, which is pretty useful in some cases. If we go into device configuration tab, you will see different devices. The first one is the controller itself and usually don't need to go there. Uh, and then you have different configuration uh, tabs for each device. Interview 
shows you the overall status of the device. So it's device ID number two. You can also see the brand of the device, the current status of the device, version and SDK. And here you see different command classes. Uh, we will walk through common classes a little bit later. Just notice uh, a note here that you can look on them on this page and we will come back a little bit later to this tab and inspect it in more details. You can also do some device specific configuration. Uh, for some devices it's possible to do it uh, with a um, uh, nice user interface. Uh, for others, it's not. For example, for the Filio plug, in our database, it was found that the device is um, uh, listed uh, with all the configuration parameters, and all the parameters here are, are named. So you don't need to open the manual and look that the device has parameter number one and uh, uh, check what does it mean, parameter number one. You just uh, open here, you read the documentation, right in this screen and you set up your device. Uh, but uh, not all devices are entered in our database because uh, devices are manufactured quite often, their version changes uh, quite a lot, uh, quite often, so we don't have time to follow and uh, scan all the manuals. Uh, so either manufacturers um, do it and send us, or sometimes user, uh, active users, they do it and send us updated information. The association tab allows you to associate uh, the device with um, other Z-Wave devices. We will come back to this tab a little bit later. I will skip stuff that is related to network diagnostics and go to uh, much more interesting expert comments tab. This tab uh, shows you every comment class, that means every uh, feature of the device and allows you to send raw comments for each comment class. Uh, this is a pretty deep tool that uh, allows you to uh, communicate with your device on a very low Z-Wave level, uh, still without knowing, knowing all the Z-Wave uh, bytes and bits. So you don't need to open the protocol description to do that because everything is uh, made in a pretty nice user interface. And the last but not least is uh, the screen that allows you to update your device uh, firmware. Here you select a file or, or a URL if the file is available online. Uh, you select it, you uh, select which chip you want to update. This particular device allows you to update only one single chip. And then you press update button and the update will uh, happen. It usually update, uh, firmware update, update takes uh, about five minutes, from two to five minutes to uh, accomplish. Because there are quite a lot of data that flows through the air. The network tab have quite a, has quite a lot of different options. Most of them are about network diagnostics and um, we will skip them because there is a dedicated webinar for this topic. Uh, but for us, more, one of the most important is control tab. Control tab uh, helps you to do network management and uh, The very first uh, box uh, here is to include a device and exclude a device. Uh, this switch just allows you to select security mode if you want unsecure inclusion or you want secure inclusion. In most cases, you just want secure inclusion, so we will not um, uh, press this button in most cases, but today I will show you a pretty rare case where you need it. Uh, Besides that, you can include your controller in another network. Currently, it's not available because you have included devices in your controller. So before doing it, you have to reset your controller to factory defaults, and then you can include it in another network. You can also do a controller change. That means you will include a new controller that will become primary, and Z-Way controller will become secondary. 
Backup and restore allows you to save your full network topology and restore it back on this on another hardware. Operating frequency allows you to change frequency inside your region. Uh, this is quite useful when you uh, bought a USB dongle which is suited, for example, for Europe, then you can switch it to frequ other frequencies, for example, Russia, India, or China, uh, that are in the exactly same uh, frequency range, a little bit shifted, but um, the hardware is still the same. Uh, you can even switch to another uh, frequency region if you enable debug, um, uh, debug mode, but uh, keep in mind that the range will be dramatically shortened. On the network maintenance block, you can remove failed nodes. You can replace uh, failed nodes by new devices. And uh, for battery device, there is no automatic detection for um, failed devices. So you have to mark them as failed explicitly. Why is this? This is because in, uh, with uh, battery devices, uh, you cannot detect if, it's going, if it is sleeping or it's dead. Because when it is sleeping, it's not available at all for the controller. So the controller can uh, only guess. Um, and uh, to help it understand that the device is failed and you want to replace it, you have to explicitly mark it as failed. So if we do it, for example, for our device number two, and we mark it as a failed node, uh, it will appear uh, in the remove failed uh, screen uh, once tested. Uh, but um, uh, if the device will uh, send us a packet, the way will immediately understand that the device is still alive and will turn it back to a working device. So will not uh, allow you to remove a device that is still working. Another button allows you to, yeah, so you see that the Z-Way has tested and now you can remove this device, number two, or replace it. But if I take uh, the device and I wake it up, so this is the device, uh, the way will understand, yeah, I need to wake it. The way will understand that the device is, um, uh, it is back and um, if we refresh the page, it will show, okay, there is no failed device anymore and now you need to mark it again. Uh, the SUC and SIC management is a pretty advanced topic in Z-Wave. Uh, protocol and in most cases you don't need to touch it, but if you want there are buttons. We will not stop on them uh, because uh, it's quite um, uh, quite obscure topic in Z-Wave. Um, if you are really interested, we can make a dedicated uh, webinar about this, but in most cases you don't need it. And um, at the end you have controller maintenance uh, tab where you can reset the API. This is just to reboot the Z-Wave chip in case of problems. Uh, and um, controller factory default. The controller factory default allows you to uh, reset everything about your controller to factory uh, defaults and start your network from scratch. So for example, if you have tested um, something and then you want to restart over, you can use that button and uh, your, net, your controller will have no devices anymore and uh, you will be able to start from scratch. We will not stop on those different um, tabs, but we'll go directly to controller info. Controller info is a, a page that shows you uh, the node ID of your controller because uh, your controller can be not also a primary one, but also a secondary one in case it is included into another network. Uh, you can also see uh, the home ID. Uh, it's useful if you have many networks and you need to identify between them. Uh, additionally, the role, the primary role, uh, different capabilities, uh, the, and um, SIS, SUC status. You can also see the hardware, which chip is used. This is a fifth generation chip. 
Um, the library type, uh, it's a static controller based on uh, not the latest, but one of the latest SDK. And this is uh, the Z-Wave Me firmware version for this USB dongle. Um, some very technical information and um, uh, Z-Wave version. In uh, analytics tools, there are quite a lot to make, uh, to help you understand the um, health status of your network. But for us, the most important will be the sniffer tray, the sniffer tab, because this is the one that will allow you to uh, inspect what happens in your network. For example, here I have um, closed the door with the motion sensor, uh, with the door sensor, and we see that the device has sent us uh, some security request. We reported back security, uh, temporary security key, and then the device sent us several messages together. So it has sent us a battery report, uh, a sensor binary report for door. Uh, additionally, uh, a multi-sensor report and another multi-sensor report. So this one was temperature, uh, this one was temperature, and this was, one was luminance. Uh, this screen helps you to understand what happens in your network. For example, if you don't see a reaction of your devices and you expect it, uh, you can go in this uh, screen and see what is actually sent uh, by, um, by the device. Let's now go back to the um, uh, presentation and uh, discuss more topics. So, yeah, uh, um, to have all those analytics tools that uh, are described here, uh, you need to have um, a uh, newer version of the Z-Wave SDK and uh, newer version of uh, the uh, Z-Wave Me firmware. Uh, you can go in uh, uh, in the uh, in the the last uh, screen that we just discussed and um, in the previous one. Yeah, and uh, scroll down, and you will see that. Uh, you can go into firmware upgrade. Um, here there is also a debug button that allows you to enable some um, uh, advanced features of uh, the expert user interface. Most of them are uh, test features, uh, beta features, or just uh, features that most users don't need even in expert mode, so we hide it um, from here. Um, So let's go back to the presentation and uh, continue with more Z-Wave topics. So let's understand now a little bit uh, more about the Z-Wave protocol uh, because uh, uh, this will be essential for uh, next topics in this webinar. First of all, let's discuss um, what is the typical packet flow in Z-Wave. Uh, in most cases, the controller is communicating with different devices. So in this example, the controller is sending a binary switch set, that means turn on some relay, uh, and um, uh, the controller can also request uh, the current status and the device will report it. Uh, so this is the typical packet flow. Uh, so a set comment is usually, uh, uh, is usually uh, just a single one, just tells you to do something, and the get comment is uh, uh, always accompanied by a report. But sometimes you need a device-to-device -device communication. And uh, here, a device, for example, a door sensor, uh, can send uh, 
set command that means uh, set a switch state to another device for example a wall plug uh, and uh, here it's important that those devices should share the same security scheme uh, such direct uh, communication is called associations or direct associations uh, so let's discuss a little bit what does it mean how it works and um, um, how to set it up so direct communication between z-wave devices uh, is uh, needed when for example you need to turn on the light um, by a door sensor or if you want to do a temperature report from some uh, temperature sensor directly to a thermostat so the thermostat can uh, control the heater uh, and uh, sometimes you don't want those um, communications to be done for controller for more reliability and to upload the controller from simple uh, operations additionally it's much faster because it takes uh, less communication and less delays uh, but keep in mind that direct associations are uh, useful only for very simple cases where for example you just want something to be turned on and off based on a door sensor or a motion sensor and it does not work when you want uh, some advanced scenarios like if the time is between uh, five o'clock and six o'clock and the temperature outdoor for example the, the weather is shiny then do something S such scenarios can only work if uh, your controller is involved because only the controller do knows the exact time of the day the weather taken from the internet uh, and uh, execute some complex rules uh, but let's get back to as direct associations to explain you what is association we need to keep in mind that if dev the device um, uh, sends some event for example we open the door with uh, this device uh, when the door is open the device will need to send something uh, actually this device is sending on off comments to other devices uh, and um, to manage those direct associations in z-wave there are association groups an association group is a list of devices that will receive a comment from uh, the sender at a the comment will be a specific comment described in the manual of this device and um, the comment will be sent at a very specific event also described in the manual for example for this device uh, on off uh, open, um, sorry door open close event will send a switch on off comment and the list of devices that will receive this comment is the only thing that is managed by you uh, the specific command that is sent by the device and the event that will trigger this send operation are above divide, uh, defined by the uh, device manufacturer and are described in the manual you cannot change them in most cases to give you a better description of how it works let's um, look for example uh, on a typical um, switch that uh, has two pedals two pedals right pedal and left pedal to turn on off uh, different lights uh, such a device uh, or for example this is this might be a um, uh, remote control with two buttons uh, such a device will present you three groups one group group number one uh, will send different reports to controllers group number two uh, in our example will send uh, on off operations when the left button is pressed and uh, group number three will do pretty same but for uh, the right button it will send on off when the right button is pressed uh, and uh, by red arrows we show here uh, events that are defined in the device uh, by blue arrows we show the command that will be sent uh, from this device and the green is the only that you can manage 
uh, is the list of uh, receivers who will receive the comment that will be sent on a particular event. So this is, uh, in brief, the description of uh, Z-Wave associations. And now let's do some associations on a real, uh, in a real case. So if we turn uh, to the to the doubles, uh, sorry. Mm, looks like internet problem in. Okay, so uh, this is the association screen uh, for the door sensor. And here we have two association groups. One association group is uh, the lifeline, uh, so-called lifeline. It's um, the group where all the events are sent to. And usually you want only the controller to be uh, listed here. The controller will receive all the events from the device. If we remove uh, the controller from this group, it will stop receiving uh, sensor events from uh, this door sensor. The second group is on-off light. Uh, this group will receive uh, on-off events on door open-close events. And here we want to add, for example, our plug. So if we add the plug and we wake up the device to let it accept those uh, values, we will expect that the device will switch on off uh, when we open and close the door. So making Z-Wave associations is pretty easy. Uh, and um, in most cases, it's uh, exactly what you want because um, uh, in most cases, devices that are uh, controlled by sensors are located near uh, the sensor itself, and you don't need the command to go to the controller and back to the device. So you will um, certainly set up a direct association. Additionally, if, uh, for example, uh, your controller will, um, uh, will be disconnected, this direct association will still continue to work. Let's go back to the Z-Wave protocol and uh, now dive a little bit into Z-Wave command classes. Uh, to better understand the Z-Wave protocol, you need to understand the basic concept of um, uh, Z-Wave commands. And um, to, since the Z-Wave protocol is a very standardized uh, there is a very uh, clear uh, separation of commands in different so-called classes. Uh, command class is a set of commands that are applied to the same feature. For example, uh, command class sensor multilevel uh, in the middle of the screen will describe uh, different commands that are related to a multilevel sensor. For example, temperature sensor, light sensor, uh, and so on. Uh, association command class on the right will be uh, about setting up associations and reading association status. Uh, there are quite a lot of different command classes uh, defined in Z-Wave, and uh, they are all very well described in the Z-Wave uh, specification, which is public and available for everybody. Uh, here we will look a little bit on a few comments to help you understand how your Z-Wave devices are working. So here uh, we show only six basic um, 
comment classes, but there are way more. Uh, basic is, comment class is made for basic interoperability. That means all the device should understand it uh, to be able to uh, understand each other on a very, very basic level. Uh, for example, a door sensor will send a basic uh, comment to a switch, to a dimmer, to a roller shutter, and all of them will interpret it in, in their specific way, but uh, it's very well described how they do it, depending on the device type, and this helps uh, device to be interoperable between different brands and different types. Uh, switch binary is uh, a command class that describes how to switch on a relay, switch off a relay, request a value, and report the value. Uh, battery command class describes how to request and got, get back um, the battery status. Configuration command class helps you to uh, configure the Z-Wave device and read back configuration values. There are in total about uh, 100 different command classes and we will not discuss them uh, right here because uh, on this slide, you see the link to the Z-Wave specification. Uh, it's a very big document. In total, there are four documents and about more than a thousand pages uh, uh, to inspect. But uh, if you really want to understand what happens in your Z-Wave devices, we encourage you to uh, read that documentation. Uh, but here, we will do a very, very brief presentation. So all the comments in Z-Wave are packed in bytes. Uh, on this um, slide, you see four bytes. Byte number one, the topmost, uh, contains the comment class identificator, the comment class ID. Second one uh, contains the uh, specific comment for this comment class. And then the actual payload, uh, which is sent with uh, this comment. All that looks pretty obscure, but let's see some real packets and real examples. For example, turn on uh, a switch. This command will have only three bytes. Byte number one is the command class ID, uh, which is uh, 25. Please note that we write here hexamal forms. Uh, because uh, in protocol descriptions, in most cases, it's uh, better to use uh, hexamal numbers. So 0x is uh, um, for hexamal form of the number, and 25 in hexamal is 37 in uh, decimal. Uh, then the comment set is usually 0, 1. And the actual value might be 0, for off and FF or 255 for turning on. So when you want to send a comment to a device to turn it on, you only need to send three bytes to that particular device. If you want to, to um, uh, request a value, you will need to send only two bytes. The same comment class ID because you want to request switch binary status. And then the comment, the comment is get 02. Uh, the device will reply with a switch state report, which consists of three bytes. And here, the same comment class ID. Then you have 03 for report comment, and then the value, the actual value. Uh, pretty same we're showing for uh, the dimmer. Uh, on the lower uh, side of this page. And uh, here the only difference is that the value is uh, 30%. It's not FF, but uh, 1E. 1E is uh, um, 30 uh, in um, decimal. And uh, the other difference is the command class ID, which is now 26. All those 25 and 26 are taken from the Z-Wave documentation, so don't be scared about numbers. You just open documentation and you look on the actual number. 
All this is to show you that actually sending um, a command to a Z-Wave device is just about sending several bytes to that device. And those bytes are pretty easy to read, so there are nothing obscure in Z-Wave. You can uh, look and inspect different packets. Sometimes uh, devices have several channels. For example, the uh, Fibaro double switch, which is included in our presentation, uh, is a device that contains two channels, two, Z two, two switches. And to control two switches, you don't have anything in switch binary um, command class to define uh, and tell exactly which switch to turn on uh, or off. And for this, in Z-Wave, you use so-called encapsulation. So you will use another command class, which is called multi-channel, that will have, uh, have a command encapsulate 0D, and then uh, this command will define that we want to send from channel 0 to channel 2. So we want to switch a second, uh, second relay. And then we will uh, add the three bytes that, are, um, that were shown on the previous slide. So you see that uh, to turn on or off a double switch, you need four additional bytes to describe uh, which exactly channel you need to address. In the very same way, if the device is uh, willing to report us, it will send from the channel 2 to the channel 0 the report. So everything looks pretty same as uh, on the previous slide, but additional uh, preamble is added to denote the exact channel numbers. The last example is for motion sensor and for temperature sensor. So those two sensors, uh, they have other common, um, common classes. Uh, 30 in hexamal is the sensor binary report, then um, zero 03 is the report, then the actual value, and the, at the end, the type of uh, the sensor. It might be motion sensor, door sensor, uh, and there are quite a lot of different sensors defined in Z-Wave that uh, uh, can be found in the Z-Wave specification. So you just open the specification, and you look which um, number uh, is uh, connected to which uh, sensor type. Pretty same for temperature report. Here you see 31 for sensor multilevel. 05, um, it's not free, but 5 uh, by the protocol to report. This is because the, pro the report looks very different from the previous one. Uh, so it was decided to uh, choose another number for the comment, another ID. And then you see the temperature sensor, 01. For example, for uh, the light we have seen before, it was 03. Uh, in the... Uh, during our Z-Way tour, we looked on uh, sniffer uh, of um, packets from our door sensor, and we have seen that packet. And the rest is to define the how bytes are packed and what is the actual value. So here, 0, uh, 0, 010B is uh, 267 in decimal, and... Um, then it's defined that we need to divide it by 10, and it will give 26.7 degrees. So don't be scared about all those numbers, bytes, and bits. Uh, just um, uh, what we just want is to let you understand in brief how it works and where to look in case you need it. Uh, there is no need to memorize all those bytes and bits because you always have the specification available. and um, we believe that uh, hopefully after such a webinar, you will be able to open the, the documentation and navigate it quite easily. Let's now look on real packets. So we will go back to the uh, the actual user interface and see uh, in sniffer trace 
for example, different uh, reports. So device device uh, number two, which is the door sensor, reported us uh, values. Here we decoded them. For example, battery. Uh, the command class name battery was decoded. The command um, ID was also decoded uh, and written in text, but the actual value um, was stored here in bytes. For example, if we look for a uh, multi level uh, sensor report, we will see that multi level sensor report is the 31 uh, like shown before. The report is 05 and then 03 for luminance for the type. 01 uh, is, uh, uh, means that there will be only one byte representing the luminance and then the actual value. Pretty same for temperature. This explains in which uh, scale the temperature is sent, that it's Celsius in two bytes. And uh, here is the actual value. We will also pass through very, very advanced topic uh, and um, let you understand that in Z-Way, you can, uh, first of all, send raw data to devices. So in comparison that with the expert comments described before, where you can send common classes comments, uh, here you can send the full raw comments to any device. And additionally, you can do it without security and with security. Uh, and um, on this slide, you see an example how to send uh, the temperature report to device number three. For example, if device number three is a thermostat and it expects a temperature, you can send it a temperature report uh, so that it will pretend that it was received from a sensor. This is... Uh, quite good for debugging uh, various devices. Additionally, it uh, might be needed if your thermostat is expecting some temperature sensor and you want uh, the way itself to send those values and not some sensor. Um, all those comments and the API is described in the uh, full Z-Wave uh, Z man manual. So you can open it, go to Appendix D and E and uh, find those descriptions. Uh, there are even more geeky stuff that most people don't, uh, don't use, but uh, uh, it might be also interesting to see uh, how the way will uh, react on receiving different packets. Uh, so you can pretend that you received a packet from a device and um, uh, let see the way how it will analyze it and show it. Uh, in most cases, you don't need it, but sometimes doing deep debugging of your devices, uh, for example, for device manufacturers, sometimes you want to understand what's wrong with your device and uh, how to make it work. Um, so sometimes it's needed. This is also tricky if you want to bypass some device faulty, for example, and send uh, a comment that you expect from the device, the device is never sending it. Now let's discuss um, in uh, details what is Z-Wave interview. Uh, so as um, you probably know, Z-Wave protocol not only defines the way to communicate between devices, but also how to automatically uh, distinguish device capabilities and uh, learn them. Uh, the beauty of Z-Wave is that each Z-Wave device can tell you the full story about itself. There are no templates needed for um, individual devices in Z-Wave. The device itself can answer all the questions that are needed to make uh, a beautiful user interface in your controller. Uh, so if we look on how it works uh, in, in reality, um, suppose you have a new device and you know nothing about, uh, the controller knows nothing about it. Suppose you have bought uh, a 
a pretty uh, strange device with uh, two switches and uh, third one which is acting as a, dim, uh, uh, as a thermostat. So it's uh, three switch devices, but two of them are just to switch on off, and third one is uh, to change temperature, uh, to control temperature, uh, to control a heater. So when you include this device in your Z-Wave controller, the controller will know nothing about the device. And on the very beginning, uh, the controller will ask, what command classes do you support? The CC in this table uh, refers to command classes. And the device will answer, uh, I support switch binary, sensor multi-level, and multi-channel. Uh, the controller will understand, OK, the device is um, supporting some switch. Uh, it can also report some values and provides a few more channels uh, to control something else. But at this stage, we only know about the switch and nothing else. Uh, so we can also request the switch state, and now we know exactly about the switch, that it's a switch, and currently it's off. Uh, we don't know about the two other values. Uh, the next question the controller will perform will be, and what type of sensors do you support under sensor multi-level command class? And the device will report, okay, I support the current, the voltage, and the power. And now we know a little bit more about the device, and we can uh, ask it directly, uh, what do you support, uh, what is the current value for the, cur uh, for the current uh, sensor? What is the value for voltage sensor, and what is the value for power sensor? So at this stage, you already have quite good knowledge about the switch and the sensor. You have everything that you need uh, to show the device uh, on, on the screen of the controller. But there are some channels. And uh, at this stage, the controller will ask, and how many channels do you support? And the device will ask, I support three channels. Uh, and uh, here, we only know that there are three channels, but uh, no understanding what is inside it of uh, each of those channels. The next question will be, uh, what do you support on channel one? Which capabilities? And the device will say, OK, I support switch binary and sensor multi-level. And here, the picture will uh, more or less repeat what we have seen uh, on the previous slide, where we discover the values of the switch under channel one and uh, uh, free sensor values under channel one. Uh, we will repeat pretty same for the second channel and then proceed to the third one. So let's directly discuss the third one because as we um, decided it will be double switch um, plus thermostat. So on the third channel, we will ask about capabilities, and the device will report us, OK, support thermostat mode and thermostat set point. So we know about the device that it can control some, uh, some states of thermostat and uh, uh, also accept some uh, temperature. Then we ask it about uh, different modes that are supported, and the device will report, OK, support mode off and mode heat. Uh, and then we can ask for mode heat. What do you? What temperature range do you support? And uh, additionally, we will ask uh, about uh, the current state. So at the end of this long interview, because we have shortened quite a lot this table, uh, we will see the full understanding of the device. If you see on the very bottom uh, right cell, you will see that we already know everything about the device. The device is a triple sw double switch, uh, and the third one is a uh, uh, thermostat with uh, current temperature 22 degrees, currently in heat mode, and the range is from 5 to 35 uh, degrees. This describes more or less how Z-Wave protocol interview is working. The main idea is that the controller uh, should ask various questions to the device, and the device is supposed to reply on them. And this will give you the full picture about the device capabilities. Uh, it looks like a typical interview uh, between people. Th that's why it's called Z-Wave interview. Unfortunately, sometimes 
interview might fail. And you might see devices that do not uh, report uh, some values or don't answer some questions. And this is uh, typically a device problem that is to be solved by the manufacturer by upgrading the firmware and fixing the bug. Uh, such problems are pretty often experienced by users when they start using Z-Wave, uh, especially Z-Wave controller, uh, something might fail and they don't understand how to fix it. So uh, here we want to help you understand what to do in those cases and uh, uh, how to solve those problems. So uh, first of all, note that uh, those problems happen usually when the device uh, is not answering comments that Z-Way is expecting. And uh, in this case, you should tweak, the, uh, you should um, either update the firmware of the device uh, and uh, hope that the bug was fixed, or you can report it to the manufacturer, or you can change a little bit the structure of uh, um, the way data to force it uh, perceive that the device answered. This is why we have shown all the comments before that uh, allows you to, for example, um, emulate answer from the device. Uh, but in most cases, if you press the button like shown on this screen, force interview, you will um, force the device to uh, be requested again, and the device in most cases will answer. Or sometimes, you can just force the interview. So uh, now let's um, inspect, once you know all this, uh, let's go and see uh, how all that is looking like. So if we go to any device and we go to interview, uh, here we see that the interview is fully completed and we see those comment classes um, are available. Uh, you can also go in uh, interview results and see uh, every comment class here and the, the result of the interview. If uh, the interview is not completed, uh, you have to look in the log file and see what was wrong. Uh, in most cases, the log file is helping you to understand what's going on with the device and why it's not working. Uh, also, if you click on comment classes here in the list, you will see a data structure that is available. Um, for example, here, this is um, uh, a comment class structure for sensor binary. And uh, you see quite a lot of values, and they are stored in a tree. And this is what we call Z-Wave uh, data model, let's say. Uh, this tree represents all the values that are um, that were uh, gathered from the device during the interview process, and this way is saving them for future to always know the exact device state. So during the interview, uh, we have asked about the type of um, sensor binary uh, values, and we uh, re uh, we were replied that the device is supporting a tamper and the door window. And now we see the, the status of both of them. So uh, that value allows us to memorize everything about the device and keep it uh, always available for the controller and for you. Uh, there are additionally a uh, few uh, internal structures here that usually you don't need to look except for the interview done, which is uh, currently true, that means interview was completed. And if the interview was not completed, you will see a failure here, and uh, this is what you need to change to make the device work. So looking on those, uh, um, on those data trees, you can see that um, uh, on this example here we show we have grade everything that you usually don't need. And for example, for switch binary, 
you have a tree where only level is important for you. Sometimes you also want to see interview status, but uh, usually it's done. Uh, so only level is something that you need. Uh, true and false is uh, for on and off uh, correspondingly. Uh, for an example of thermostat set point, the data tree will be much bigger because uh, in, in this example, the device will report heating mode and cooling mode, and you have temperature for both of them. And then you can um, also see that during the interview, we asked the device about temperature range that is available for this thermostat, and it reported that it can work from 5 degrees to 35 degrees. So, for example, if, uh, and this is what you see in the user interface, so the user interface allows you to change between 5 and 35. So, for example, if you want to change something, you can do it directly in Z-Way uh, data. We do not encourage you to tweak uh, Z-Way internal data structures because you can break things, but uh, in some cases it's, um, important to have access to those values and change something and save it for your future use. For example, if, you, um, if your thermostat reported that it, it has a range from 0 to 35 degrees and you never want the user to set up uh, 0 degrees and the 5 should be the minimum not to freeze your tubes, uh, your water tubes in the house, you might want to send it to 5 and the user interface will um, provide you the uh, the, the way to change temperature only between 5 and 35. Note that it's only about the knowledge about, uh, of Z-Way about the device and will not affect the device itself. So it will just change the way Z-Way is dealing with the device. So we have uh, just seen a few data trees. Uh, let's now continue with uh, even more deep um, look on the Z-Way server and uh, how it handles packets. In many cases, when uh, you ask for support, we ask you to send us some log files. Log files are very important to help us understand what happens with um, uh, the Z-Wave controller. And uh, if you look, in the log file, you will be able to understand uh, what is happening in the engine, and some users even find problems by themselves without uh, asking us to inspect the problem. So here we show the command how to um, run uh, the detailed uh, log view in your controller when you access it through SSH. So this is, for example, for Raspberry Pi. Uh, you can just inspect the log file, but uh, to make the, your life easier, we have made a special tool, which is called Colorize Log, uh, that allows you to uh, have nice, fancy colors uh, to uh, help you easily uh, read the log, because there are quite a lot of stuff in it, and uh, uh, we want to help you to understand it better. So this is an example uh, of the log file that shows you um, the moment where we set temperature in the device. So when we press um, set temperature for um, uh, 30 degrees, we will see a comment that was um, added to the queue. The command was ther thermostat set point set. Uh, since the device is a secure one, this command will be immediately encapsulated inside security, and the actual command will be sent through security. So you cannot really read it. The line sending is uh, showing you an encrypted command, but below, below you can see the secure payload, and in bold we see the 43. 010101E. This is the command set temperature for uh, heating and uh, uh, the temperature, uh, the last two bytes are, is the temperature. 
then we will see that the device uh, received uh, the comment, the comment was delivered, uh, and then we expect a reply to this comment to confirm that uh, actually this temperature was applied. And then we see a received, received, which is also a secure comment, so you cannot read it, but below you can see a line that is decrypting your packet. And um, we see that the device is telling us, okay, we received the reply, and the, um, and the packet denotes that, okay, it was confirmed, everything is okay. Uh, we can show you how to see logs, uh, how to inspect logs and understand what happens. Uh, why is it important to analyze logs? Because below we will show you some um, typical failures of uh, existing devices and um, uh, we will show you how we analyzed in a few minutes and understood what was the issue with uh, uh, those particular devices and how to fix it. So um, now I will go and show you a few real examples uh, based on real devices. Uh, we have picked up few devices that uh, were uh, taken just from the market from the shelf and uh, it's just an example with existing devices that were, were not selected by us, but just taken from the warehouse. Uh, and uh, we have heard from customers that there are problems with those devices. And we decided, okay, let's do uh, an analysis and see what happens. Uh, please note that this is only about per particular version of those particular devices. It has nothing to do with uh, those companies. I mean. Uh, in general, Filio, Fibaro, we have also inspected some GoUp devices and more and more. In most cases, all the devices works out of the box. There are no problems with them and everything is uh, just sm working smoothly. But there are rare cases um, when things are not working uh, as expected in Z-Wave. And here is where the customer is saying, ah, Z-Wave is not interoperable. In fact, it is. But unfortunately, we're all humans, we're all doing uh, bugs, and those bugs end up on the market. Uh, and um, it, of course, also happens where uh, problems you experience are, uh, are because we have made some bugs in our controller, in our Z-Way controller. Sometimes it's because we found, you found some bugs in existing devices. So now uh, here I picked up a few problematic cases and I would like to show you how to understand what happens. Um, here we have the motion sensor, uh, uh, the, sorry, the door sensor. And what we did before was as associated it with a plug. But the problem is, th the, is that the plug is not receiving this uh, comment. So if we uh, turn on off, uh, if we open um, the door, we will not see the plug clicking. And this is the problem that we want to debug. So if we do uh, with the device open close, nothing is happening. Even though that uh, both devices, the door sensor and the plug are from same company, you see that sometimes it's not working. And um, in most controllers, you will not even understand what happens. And here we want to help you understand why is this. So you see a situation where you have associ associated the device, um, door sensor device with a plug, and you expect that the command is sent, but nothing happens. You, we, we don't hear the plug clicking. Uh, to help us analyze the problem, let's, let's add the way in uh, the second group instead of the plug, or we will even keep the plug. And let's remove it from uh, the lifeline, not to disturb us. So we wake up the device to apply those settings. Yeah, let's wake, wake up. Oh, uh, no, not yet. 
yeah, sometimes it's not easy to, to, to wake up devices. And here I have opened the, um, let's do it again. And uh, I have also opened the um, blog to help us un uh, understand what happens. Okay, so now we see the way is the only one to receive uh, uh, on off comments. We will not receive anything else from the device because we removed it from the lifeline. Uh, also note that the device has security. So we have included it with security. Let's now uh, open and close and see what happens. So first of all, we want uh, to look in the sniffer and see if we see some packets. So we do, we don't. And this is, ah, we do, perfect, so we do. And what do you see here? You see that the device is um, turning on and off our controller because it pretends it's a plug. But there is no security, there is no S here, which is a uh, state for security. That means the packet is not secured. If you go in uh, the log file, you will see quite a lot of red. The, the colorize log tool is cool because um, it shows you immediately in colors problematic um, lines. All red lines are immediately um, seen and uh, you should usually look on those one. So here, uh, just one line before, you can see that, okay, we have received the basic, but it's not secure, but it's not allowed because uh, uh, the device had to send us secure comments. So now we understand that this device, this particular device, is sending us uh, unsecure comments, but the plug is secure. And this explains that why the device is not clicking, is not reacting on comments from the door sensor. Uh, to show you how to solve this, Let's go in network control and let's do unsecure inclusion. So we will exclude that particular device, device excluded, and now we will include it without security. So we have marked unsecure inclusion. So the device uh, will take 20 seconds to include because in unsecure mode, we always have to wait 20 seconds to let the security fail and then include it without the security. And after that, we can go and um, uh, check if now the association will work. So let's wait a little bit and see how the progress bar will go. Yeah, you see the security just disappeared and now uh, the secure interview automatically ended. Perfect. So let's go, uh, let's name the device for, uh, to make it easier. Okay. Let's go here and make the association. So we will remove the way from the list and add the plug. Now it's number five instead of four because we have re-included it. So waking up the device. Okay. And now, and now the plug is clicking. So uh, I will try to move it closer so you hear it. Yeah, the plug is clicking and everything is working as we expected. Uh, you can also see under uh, the control tab that uh, the device state is changed. Ah, you don't see the, the switch, okay, yeah. So everything is working as expected with uh, one single problem. We see that the device uh, is turning on Im immediately and turned off with a small delay. And this is because of the device configuration. So if we go in device uh, configuration, we should change some parameters for the device and uh, force it to 
to turn off the device immediately instead of waiting for a uh, few seconds. This is because of the device specific configuration parameters. And uh, for this, we need to open the manual and see that we need to change parameter 6 to 22. But this is unfortunately uh, device specific. You have to look on it in the manual. And uh, preparing that webinar, I was puzzled why the device is switching off uh, the device not immediately, but after five seconds, and then realized, OK, it's by design. You have to read the manual. And then after changing the parameter, we have disabled it. And now it works perfectly. So that was about uh, this, those particular two devices. So you see that two devices that are supposed to work together because they are made by one company are not doing it because one is sending secure command, another one is not secure command. At those moments, you say, oh, Z-Wave is not interoperable. In fact, it is, but there are uh, quite a lot of mess with security because usually customers don't really uh, take care about the security uh, and uh, expect that it will work automatically. So let's go uh, and see another example. So I will re-include the device again, but with, with security this time. Uh, OK, our plug was already included. Perfect. Let's name it. OK, secure inclusion goes much faster because we don't need to wait. Uh, OK, and now we want um, the Fibaro device to control the plug. So I have plugged it in. Uh, Press the button. OK. Uh, now we go to into, um, so you see it was, uh, it was marked as failed. I plugged it in. And now it's active perfectly. So if I go into configuration of this device, there are quite a lot of association groups. Um, what I want is just uh, to let the button connected to the Fibaro device uh, to control the filial plug. Sounds easy, and there is uh, an association group for, for this, on off, on, button, on S1 group, and now let's select the plug. So far it sounds very easy, and we expect that it should work. Uh, but let's do it, and notice uh, yeah, currently it's, um, and we also see another group here. Let's see. There is another, a few other groups. And let's understand how this is working. So on channel one, there is S1 and S2, yeah. So um, let's add the way in this group and also analyze uh, what are the comments sent by the device. So let's do uh, plain association. That means association without channels and see what packets is, is, are received by the way when we uh, press the button. So I'm pressing the button and I see that uh, we received some reports. Yeah, OK. And we see that we have received a comment. Again, the way um, discarded it because of the security, but it does not really matter because we need the comment itself. So when we tried to set up the, uh, the association with the plug, it failed. And now if we have changed the plug to z uh, let's analyze what is received. The comment which is received should look like those two bytes. Basic, set, turn on. But instead, we have got another comment, which is much longer. And if we look in uh, previous slides of our presentation, we will see that this is a uh, multi-channel from channel 1 to channel 0 switch on. And of course, the filio plug is not supporting multi-channel, so it's just discarding this comment. 
And this explains why, again, a pretty simple and obvious thing like uh, turning on off a switch, uh, a, a wall plug from a switch uh, is not working. Um, if it will, if instead of the filio plug we will have uh, some multi-channel device, for example, a double switch or a triple switch or whatever, everything would work as expected. But here it's not working because the filio plug is not supporting multi-channel. Uh, so this explains, for example, why uh, Fibaro th that particular uh, Fibaro device on that particular application version. So I will show it here is not working with a filio plug, but is working with any double uh, and single switch by Fibaro, Filio, GoUp, and others. Because the, the, those devices, the double switches and even single switches usually have multi-channel implemented. But a filio plug is not um, uh, implementing it, and that's why the association fails. So in this example, we have shown how um, log file and changing association to uh, Z-Way helps you to understand device problems. Uh, please note that um, this is not really Z-Wave uh, non-compatibility. This is more about uh, different implementation in devices and sometimes strange implementations. If you look on uh, uh, different products, there firmwares are changing quite often, and I'm pretty sure that if we update uh, uh, the firmwares on all of those devices, we will get absolutely correct uh, work of uh, those products. But since we took them from the shelf uh, uh, right from factory, uh, and th those are quite old devices that we got some a year ago or something like that, uh, we don't expect them to be uh, on the latest, latest firmwares, and that's why uh, it's not working. Uh, we, of course, encourage all the manufacturers to check their devices for compatibility between each other, because sometimes you expect it to work, but it's not working, and it's not uh, because of protocol failures, but because of implementation failures. And, of course, all humans are doing bugs. Uh, in the way to solve some of those problems, we have a special mechanism that is doing device-specific fixes. Uh, it's located um, in a one single JSON file. If you are a manufacturer, we encourage you to at least look on those um, uh, look on records for your products and do if there are no records for your products, do them to fix. Uh, simple things that you can fix using Z-Way. Uh, otherwise, just update the firmware and push people to upgrade products. So that was uh, uh, a very deep insight into Z-Wave expert user interfaces. I hope that it was not too deep and uh, we have not overloaded you with uh, too much information, but uh, we believe that it will be interesting to see how to debug real problems between devices and um, uh, will help you to understand how Z-Wave is working and uh, uh, how to help you uh, to make more robust networks, more interoperable networks with many different devices. Uh, and uh, now there will be a Q&A session. Uh, if you have questions, please write them. Uh, in the special question um, tab. Um, can, you get, can you get more in explanation about how to add different device configuration files to Z-Way? Um, yeah, uh, it's possible. So let's... Um, uh, probably look very briefly uh, how to add them and what do they provide to, to you as um, a customer, as a user. Uh, very good question. So if you look on uh, uh, interview um, page, you will see select device description tab uh, button. This button 
it allows you to get um, device description record from our database. Uh, we pick up those devices from Z-Wave Alliance database and from our own database. Uh, why do those descriptions um, help you? First of all, it's just to show you a picture, uh, a name, uh, and additionally, there, there is a, a description of configuration parameters. Because as stated before, everything you can get from, uh, um, in, in most cases, everything you get from the device for Z-Wave is enough to provide you uh, a good user interface. But here, as you have seen, we have loaded the description and we see, ah, okay, uh, we know much more about the device. We know um, about its certification number, product code, etc., and even a link to a manual, which is also uh, very nice because you can open it right from here. Uh, but the most important is that now we have those uh, on the configuration tab, those configuration parameters, much more user friendly. Uh, so as stated before, you, you, almost everything you can get from the device itself, but um, the configuration parameter are to be taken from the manual. So usually we take them either ourselves from the manual or the manufacturer is doing it, or we get it from the Z-Wave Alliance database if the database uh, contains those values. If there is only one matching record for a particular device, it will be automatically loaded. Uh, but if there are no uh, matching uh, records, fully matching records, or there are many of them, for example, from uh, in the Alliance database, there are two devices that looks really the same, but just different region, uh, you will see uh, several records, and Z-Way will not be able to understand which one to pick up. So it will uh, uh, give you the possibility to select it. Uh, so your configuration tab, uh, changed to a pretty nice one uh, with descriptions. Still, you can um, use expert comments to set parameters that are not listed here. Uh, basically, this is all what you get th with this description. Uh, so the description file can be downloaded through this button, or um, you can also create a new one. The button ZDDX uh, code creator will create you a template button for your new device, and then you just need to fill it. It's an XML, and you need to fill it, and then send us back uh, to publish on our site. So let's continue with, um, uh, but uh, pl please note that uh, this is not mandatory for a device to work, so this is just uh, helping users to fill configuration parameters and uh, especially nothing, nothing else. Uh, yeah, if you don't see analytics tab uh, and you have uh, some old Raspberry or UZB, uh, if it's a third generation, sorry, you can't get those features because it's uh, pretty old, third generation Z-Wave chip. Uh, if uh, it's um, fifth generation, you have to update uh, your hardware Raspberry or Z-Way, uh, sorry, Raspberry or UZB, and this is done in uh, uh, Control Info Firmware Updates tab, and uh, in some cases you need to uh, type hidden word all here, and you will see, for example, I can downgrade from 5.36 back to 5.27. Uh, you can also use this to switch between bridge versions and uh, static controller versions. Uh, this is for uh, deep uh, 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 for developers who need some particular version of the SDK uh, or bridge SDK, which is uh, needed for some. Uh, software like uh, Zidware uh, by Silicon Labs. Um, what's, what is SUC and, um, yeah, next question is what is SUC and SIS? Um, so I don't really want to describe uh, that in uh, details, but um, in Z-Wave, 
there is a primary controller and uh, in old years uh, the primary controller was in most cases a remote control uh, so in very old ages where z-wave was just for light lighting control uh, static um, uh, controllers mean controllers that do not move that are pc based were quite rare and uh, all the controllers were portable controllers like uh, a remote control um, uh, for the light so uh, to include devices you had to walk with this wall control uh, with this remote control uh, through your house and to click on devices you want to include to your network and uh, of course there was a problem that if that particular device is um, uh, is lost your network will still continue to work but uh, you will not be able to include devices and exclude devices uh, and at that time the SUC appeared SUC is a static update controller so it's a static controller means a controller which is uh, not moving static um, not moving is important to always have uh, correct routes and uh, it was uh, uh, it was aimed to uh, help other devices to update routes in the network and um, also to make a backup of uh, the remote control if it's lost. Uh, why it was important to make it static? Because devices do always know how to reach it and the device should be always reachable. So in, uh, in comparison with the portable controller, which is uh, on batteries and is slipping, you can, a device can never request new routes from it. Uh, so it was pretty hard to maintain stable network. Uh, the SIC is a, in fact uh, an announcement of SUC. Uh, SIS, sorry. SIS is an enhancement of SUC. So SIS is static update controller ID server. <laughs> this is a pretty, pretty crazy acronym, but in brief, what it does, it's a combination of primary controller and SUC in one uh, entity. So if you start the network uh, with a controller like uh, Raspberry or UZB, it will automatically become SIS and it will become the, uh, the master, let's say, not only for uh, assigning nodes, but also for routing. Another addition of SIS is that uh, it turns all other controllers in so-called inclusion controllers. So any secondary controller will become an inclusion controller. What does it mean? It means that uh, uh, any secondary controller, which is now called inclusion controller, can include de devices on behalf of SIS. So if you want to include a device which is far from your primary controller, uh, the secondary one uh, was sending a special comment through the network, hey, I want to include a new device. And the SIS was replying, okay, assign it that number. Okay, I will. And uh, then the inclusion starts. Of course, all this is now pretty outdated. I mean, by default, the primary controller is a PC, it's SIS, and uh, all those uh, old features are not used anymore. But um, there are still mandatory in Z-Wave uh, to be implemented. Uh, that's why we have uh, all those uh, strange um, uh, buttons in the user interface. Uh, yeah, uh, regarding the Z-Wave packet examples, where is the device ID itself? Uh, so the device ID uh, is not um, shown here because uh, this is just let's say the payload what is sent between device number one and device number two for example uh, of course the uh, there is addition there is an additional header that contains source um, id destination id the routing the device should um, go through and uh, the home id to distinguish one network from another network there are additionally uh, some flags like uh, um, single cast, multicast, uh, broadcast mode, uh, and uh, more, more, more and more flags. For example, the speed of this uh, packet, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, so here to make uh, the um, 
to understand the Z-wave, you usually just analyze the uh, internal payload, so-called valuable data. Um, yeah. Uh, next question, you're using a Raspberry and you're res uh, based on a Raspbian uh, and logs are not colored. How to get uh, colors? Um, of course, logs are uh, not colored because they are just written in a file and um, this file is just containing text for, uh, uh, without any color. Uh, and in the latest version, 306, we have added uh, the colorize log tool. You can, uh, it, it's uh, right in the same folder where the server is, slash opt slash zway server. And uh, you can use uh, this um, tool to colorize your log like shown uh, in this presentation or just run it and it will uh, help you to explain how to run it uh, with which parameters and what to specify. Uh, you can do it run, uh, you can colorize logs uh, uh, instantly uh, and uh, see what's, uh, what's happening uh, like we have shown in the presentation or you can also analyze uh, post factum logs like just read a file and uh, give it to that tool. The tool will colorize it and show it to your screen, terminal screen. So it's just a tool that is uh, making colors and uh, helps you to read uh, uh, easier the log. Uh, next question. Um, a problem with um, Fibaro motion sensor on a particular version. It's uh, version 3.2. Um, Mm. And all Fibaro motion sensor, all Fibaro motion sensor are working fine, but the new one is not. And um, uh, yeah, I'm just looking. Oof, that's a big question. <laughs> Quite a lot of um, information. Yeah. So if you're um, qu quite often, you see devices that do not show any. Um, any changes in the sensor uh, values or in switch states. So in most cases, you have to set up uh, the way in the association group number one. Uh, if the device is allowing you to do it, for example, this device um, uh, does, uh, you should add, uh, for example, if you want to, um, yeah, sorry. Uh, I will remove and show it how to edit from scratch. So um, in devices that do not report you the state, usually have the lifeline group empty. Um, and because of this, the device do not know where to report state changes. Uh, to force it, uh, usually the way is adding itself to this group. But if the interview has not finished, uh, it will not do it because adding itself to the uh, to this group is the last thing it do, it's doing when uh, uh, interviewing association comment class. This is because we need to know exactly how to add ourselves to the device. Uh, and here is an example. So you can add the way in several ways. You can make a plain association, or you can make an association with any of the Z-Way channel. Uh, in, uh, we encourage in most cases to do association with channel zero because this is a standard. So if you had that selection, choose zero. Sometimes it's not working. For example, we have seen some reports with uh, uh, switches that are not working uh, reporting state. You should do a plain association uh, without multi-channel encapsulation. Uh, by the standard, this one should be the correct but uh, with the zero, uh, but uh, some devices do have different implementation that is slightly breaking uh, rules. And this is why uh, we suggest to test different cases. Um, in your case with the Fibaro motion sensor, it might be exactly that one. Additionally, there were some sensors of very old versions that were reporting um, cropped comment that was just incorrect and uh, um, 
those require just firmware upgrade through the home center. Um, again, a question how to um, select device description uh, for the device. Uh, it should be done as we have shown a little bit earlier before, but if you experience some problems, uh, do not hesitate to write us on support at ZWaveMe and we will consider your case and uh, uh, see what's wrong. Uh, we do know that new fiber roller shutters number three um, do not pass interview, for example. And uh, at some point, it was a Z-Way problem. That happens also. Uh, we have updated it. Now it should work well, but uh, sometimes there are issues. And uh, in most cases, we uh, either encourage customers, if, for example, it's, it does not really affect the functionality, we encourage customers to just force interview. Uh, so set the... Um, the value which is stored in Z-Way data tree to true instead of false, to just to force it, okay, the interview is done and it's pasta. Uh, and, but in some cases, it will not work because uh, the device uh, has not reported some important value to us. And in this case, um, you need to do upgrade of your device. Um, okay. Uh, if um, direct uh, communication can occur without the controller, uh, will the sniffer um, see those those uh, direct uh, associations uh, here in the um, analytics? Uh, currently, it will not. Uh, so this view only shows you uh, packets that are going to the controller and from the controller. But in next versions, there will be... Uh, an additional button to allow you so-called promiscuous mode. So you will see everything in your network, only in your network. So this is quite safe uh, in terms of uh, accessing uh, neighbors' network networks. But um, uh, of course, keep in mind that the controller might not hear the packet uh, that is between two, uh, two distant devices. So you might need to bring those devices closer to the controller or to move the, the controller closer to those devices. So this feature will appear uh, in um, one of the next version and uh, there will be just a checkbox here. Um, yeah, what can you do if there is a filter in device description uh, yeah, device description is indeed filtered uh, by the brand. Uh, if you want to select, for example, a description from another uh, brand, this is a good example is uh, even this uh, door sensor, which is uh, present on the market under several other brands. Uh, sometimes you can, uh, um, you can select another description. Unfortunately, you need to um, to change uh, description files in the file system to let it know. Or, um, yeah, I think it's um, it's the only way. Uh, you you just take one of the files you you need uh, on the file system and change the manufacturer in this file to the one you need, and um, it will be automatically listed here. Uh, it might be a good uh, feature request, and maybe we need to add a checkbox here to remove that filtering. You can write us on support and uh, present uh, your case so we analyze it and see if it's a, a good feature request, and then we do it. Uh, next question is, what is the reason to change routes? Um, um, uh, Yeah, what is the, the, the routing table tweaking uh, was discussed in, um, in another webinar uh, in the late April. Uh, we encourage you to go to that webinar and um, uh, listen uh, everything about Z-Wave routing. Uh, the reason to change routing um, is uh, when you have 
um, pretty low delivery rate. That means packets are delivered not 100%, uh, but you see quite big losses. Or where you see delays in uh, uh, packet delivery, for example, you press a button to turn on and nothing happens for several seconds and then suddenly it does. That means the Z-Wave network was really trying to uh, fix some routing problem and that took quite a long time. So um, we encourage you to listen for this webinar and um, uh, uh, you you will see why it should be done and uh, how you sh how you can bypass those problems by setting up uh, persistent routes, uh, so called preferred routes. Uh, so all this is done in uh, roadmap tab. So in this tab, oh, <laughs> it's a temporary picture. Okay, so let's go to uh, next question. Yeah, if you have um, a quite big ZUA log, uh, more than uh, 512 megabytes, um, in uh, the latest versions of ZUA, um, I think it was uh, half a year ago, we have fixed a problem that uh, resulted in log files not uh, uh, being rotated. Uh, in uh, normal situation, log files should be rotated, so you should... Um, uh, always have uh, several log files um, uh, and uh, uh, for older periods and the current log file should not be big enough. So just uh, update and if you still see the problem, please uh, write us in support and we will handle it. Um, if you cannot um, access uh, firmware upgrade and it um, complains about could not retrieve data from the server. Uh, the firmware upgrade for, uh, for the Raspberry or UZB uh, from this page is uh, made from the controller. So the controller is accessing internet and downloading the new firmware from our ser servers. And uh, sometimes it happens that uh, you have not provided access to the internet from uh, the res your Raspberry Pi. And in that case, Raspberry Pi is just not able to uh, get that data. Uh, in this case, we suggest you to uh, check network uh, settings of your Raspberry Pi and check that Raspberry Pi is able to access internet. Um, next question, um, does all this system get stuck while controller is trying to send a message to a particular node? Um, well, yes and no. Uh, the Z-Wave engine is running in an absolutely parallel th thread and uh, uh, is not affecting, for example, the user interface, so the user interface will still continue to work. Uh, and um, uh, this should be working in the same way the automation should work um, in a separate thread. So uh, sending packets to devices is not blocking that part. But of course, sending packets uh, to uh, devices, especially to devices that are dead or unreachable, uh, will definitely block the radio communication from the controller to other devices. We will still receive packets from devices uh, devices can still uh, communicate between each other, but uh, the controller itself will not be able to send anything else until it finishes with the current operation. That's why it's very important to remove failed nodes and keep your routing table safe and uh, healthy. What is the RSSI value in the sniffer, and should it be considered? Um, uh, the communication be considered unstable at, for example, minus 75 uh, dBm. Uh, in the sniffer, uh, you indeed see um, the RSSI value. Uh, this is a value uh, that represents the strength of the signal that we have received um, from uh, the device. Uh, in my case, it's too high because I have devices just near 
the controller and of course the controller is saturated by um, the radio signal so uh, it's not even able to measure the RSSI. Um, minus uh, 75 is usually quite weak. Uh, a good um, reference would be the background noise. The most important here, uh, yeah, the background noise in my case, it's uh, not nice because uh, I have turned off my controller for several periods. So you see only when it was on. But here you see that in most cases, my network uh, was, um, uh, the background noise in my network was around minus 85. And uh, there are some bursts from some radio systems, security alarm systems uh, from neighbors. Um, but um, you see that still the average uh, is uh, minus 85. So minus 75 is uh, 10 dBm on, uh, on top of the noise. So it should be okay. Going to minus 80 uh, should be already critical and uh, you should consider adding some uh, routing device in between. Um, is the SDK updated separately? Um, when you see the controller information page, you see the SDK version and uh, the um, uh, firmware version. So the SDK is updated together with the firmware. For example, this firmware is based on this SDK. Each firmware is based on some SDK by Silicon Labs. Uh, so when you update the firmware of your hardware, UCB or Raspberry, you automatically update um, the SDK to a corresponding version. Uh, of course, the way itself can work on various versions of um, the SDK. For example, it can still work on uh, uh, SDK of second and third generation Z-Wave. Uh, it will still work with them. Uh, but some features like uh, network analytics will not be um, available. I think we're done with questions uh, and we should probably uh, uh, direct all the subsequent questions to our support, uh, Z-Way at Z-Wave.me or support at Z-Wave.me, uh, where uh, you're welcome to send us uh, your questions and comments and we will uh, be happy to reply them uh, and help you to understand better the way controller. I thank you very much for this uh, webinar. Uh, we encourage you to join us uh, next week on the presentation um, uh, about the Z-Wave API. So next week, we, the 29th of May, we will discuss how to integrate Z-Wave for the HTTP API, uh, how to push values from Z-Wave to third-party systems, and how to control Z-Wave devi uh, devices connected to Z-Wave from other systems. We will also discuss Z-Wave advanced scripting, Z-Wave JavaScript API, and how to publish your own apps to the Z-Wave uh, Z uh, App Store. Thank you very much. See you next week.